I received a question from reader Sarah recently. I'm preparing discovery. I want an RFP that asks for all documents related to a specific ROG. Is there a way to put the ROG number into the RFP automatically so that if the number of the ROG changes, the reference in the RFP changes too? I thought I'd seen this in one of your very helpful emails, but heck if I can find it now. I replied that there are a couple of different ways to do it depending on the end result she's looking for. In this video, I'll demonstrate both and let you decide which works better for you. If you know how to use automatic paragraph numbering, then this whole embed across reference thing becomes very easy. Let's say you have an interrogatory or a request for admission that asks for a yes, no, or admitted, denied answer. Then, later in the document, you have a request for production that says basically, if you responded to interrogatory number X in the affirmative, produce any documents that support that answer. You want that cross-reference to update itself as you're drafting your discovery requests. I mean, who wants to go through a document searching for cross-references to update manually, right? This is how you do it. Number one, use automatic paragraph numbering. Yes, I said that already, but this is going to be key to what we'll do later. See the automatic paragraph numbering button in the paragraph command group of the Home tab. We're going to go to our interrogatories and start numbering those. I'm just going to pick a numbering scheme here. And because I don't really like the way that this is indenting, I'm going to right click here and then choose Adjust List Indents. I'm going to put my number position at 0.5 and not indent the text, so that's going to be 0. And I'm going to follow the number with a tab character. So I've got my first one numbered, and I'm going to go ahead and number the rest of them. And the way I tend to prefer to do it is once I get one of them numbered, if I've already got them typed out, I can hit the Format Painter while I've got my cursor inside the first numbered one. And I'm going to hit it twice, and it becomes persistent. You notice how that cursor has changed. And I'm going to go through and number all of my paragraphs. Now, I also don't really like the way... Oh, I'm going to turn off Format Painter here by clicking on it. You can also hit the Escape key. That'll work, too. I also don't like the way that the spacing has happened here, the spacing between paragraphs. So I'm going to select these, go to Paragraph, go to the Dialog Launcher here, and make sure that I've got 12 points of space between each of these paragraphs. And also, all of these are actually subnumbers, should be A, B, C, etc., for interrogatory number two. So I'm going to go back up here to, excuse me, this one, and do change list level, and make those like that. And again, I don't like the way that the list indents are doing, so I'm going to say number position one inch. And I am going to do text indent here. And then because this is going to restart with number one, I'm going to right click on this and do restart at one. So that is just the very basic primer on using the paragraph numbering. Now, let's look at how to embed the cross-reference. I'm going to put my cursor here, and then I'm going to go to the References tab, and in the Captions area, I'm going to click Cross-References. Now, it may make more sense. This, is actually, this command is actually on two different places. You can also go to the Insert tab, and go to Links, and click Cross-Reference, whichever way you remember it best. 
Now I'm going to get a dialog box here. Now the reference type here is going to be numbered item because these are numbered items. And I'm going to insert a reference to the paragraph number. I generally uncheck insert as hyperlink because normally I don't insert that as a hyperlink. And now I can just choose which numbered item I want to insert a cross-reference to. And then once I hit insert, you notice that number three is now embedded in here. And that does in fact, move this out of the way, cross-reference interrogatory number three within request for production number one. So I can hit close here and that's it. That's all you really need to do is make sure that your items are automatically numbered and then insert a cross-reference either from the insert tab or from the references tab. Either way will work just fine. By the way, you may be wondering why that number three is shaded. Number one, that's not going to print. That is only a setting. That is only showing me that that is a field. And that setting can be found by clicking File, Options, Advanced, and scrolling down to this called Field Shading. I generally set this to always, just so I can always see when I've got a field embedded into my document. But you can always choose never if you really don't want to see that, or only when selected, which means when you select that field, it'll shade. So that is why that number three is showing up as shaded in the document. And again, this won't print, so you don't have to worry about that. If for whatever reason you don't feel comfortable using automatic paragraph numbering or you're editing someone else's document and you don't want to risk upsetting them, there's still hope. It just requires an extra step in the beginning. Just select the paragraph number with your mouse or keyboard. Then go to the Insert tab and click Bookmark within the Links section of the Insert tab. You're going to be presented with this dialog box. Now you're going to want to name your bookmark something that makes sense to you because you could be moving paragraphs around while editing and would have to renumber the paragraphs accordingly. I would suggest not naming it something like int3 or whatever because that could not be int3 at the, at the end of the editing. You could have renamed it or you could have, or excuse me, renumbered it. So you need to name it something that's going to make sense to you when you're inserting your eventual cross-reference. Now the rules for naming bookmarks are these. It can't contain spaces and it must begin with a letter. So I'm going to name this int underscore representation because that's about a representation. And then I'm going to click add and you notice it now has brackets around it. That is the bookmark. And the reason you can see that is because in File, Options, again, this is a setting, under Advanced, I've got Show Bookmarks actually clicked. So I can actually see those in my text. Again, these don't print, they just show on the screen. Now, one quick note, when if you do have to eventually renumber this for any reason, editing these things is a little tricky because if you just back up over it or just delete it, you end up losing your bookmark. So what I would suggest is if you have to renumber this at some point, go ahead and type the new number within the bookmark and then delete the old number. That way you don't accidentally delete the bookmark. Once you've inserted your text-based bookmark, all you have to do is go to the References tab, or again, you can do this from the Insert tab, 
and click cross-reference. First, I have to actually put my cursor in the right place. Now, Insert tab or References tab and click Cross-Reference. Now, you're going to get that dialog box once again. This time, though, your reference type is going to be Bookmark. And you'll just select the correct bookmark name. Again, I usually leave this insert as hyperlink unchecked and the type of reference that we're going to be inserting here is the bookmark text. It's actually going to reproduce the number three. And then I can hit insert and close. Again, that field is shaded because it's set that way, but that is a text-based bookmark. And you've probably totally picked up on the fact that you could actually bookmark and cross-reference other pieces of text than paragraph numbers. For instance, you could repeat some of the text of the actual interrogatory if you wanted to. You could actually bookmark that and then repeat that within the request for production if you were so inclined. I'm going to put a link here for a comprehensive tutorial on exactly how to do that that I've got on my site. But maybe you don't want to use regular paragraph numbers. Maybe you want to do something like this. Yes, I once had a reader tell me this is the way they do discovery in their office. The interrogatories, request for production, and request for admission are all interspersed with each other. The bad news is you can't use regular paragraph numbers with this because this scenario requires three independent numbering schemes. Not to mention that it would be difficult to get a long phrase like request for production number in front of the paragraph number. I won't go into the details here, but I have an entire tutorial on setting up this numbering scheme. The good news is you can combine this technique with cross-references. Simply bookmark the SEQ field you create for one of your requests, then insert a cross-reference to it within another. If you'd like to download a copy of the demonstration document I've used in this video so you can see these techniques for yourself, click the download link in the upper right hand corner of the screen now, or if you're viewing this on my website, scroll down to the bottom of the post and click the download button there. Happy cross-referencing!